Hey developers, let's take a look at Vue.js and computed properties and see how they work. Hey, let's take a look at a quick example on how to use computed properties inside Vue.js. So as you can see from here, I have a real basic app, just says level 500 here, it has an H1 tag and just displays it at the top. Now we can create inside here, uh, something called computed. And this is where we put all our computed properties. And before we get started, let me just explain what computed properties are. We can look at the official documentation. Make sure I have a comma there. There we go. And if we go back to computer properties, so you can, in some cases, create in template expressions that are convenient. Like I could do something like this. I can create first name, Eric, last name, Hanchat, and I could go up here and I could be like first name plus space plus uh, last name. And if I save that and take a look at it, you can see, oh, there's Eric Hanchat. So I kind of, in this, because the interpolation, I can go ahead and just put any expression here I want, and you can get pretty complex expressions. So if you're writing complex expressions inside your template here, it's always a good idea to use a computer property instead. So keep that in mind. And in the example in the official documentations, they talk about reversing and splitting a string and then pulling that into a computed property. Now the next thing you need to know about a computed property too is that it caches your information. So a computed property, unlike a, a method, will actually hold information for your, for your, it will update your method anytime any one of the properties it uses changes. And it will cache that information, so if nothing changes, it'll just keep it. And that's really handy, especially if you're doing like Ajax calls or anything a little bit more complicated than what we're doing today. So the quintessential example for using uh, using computer properties is the first name, last name, and that's kind of seen in a lot of different places. So if we have the first name here, instead of something like this, I create something called full name. Call it full name, and I haven't created it yet. And in here, I'll create full name. Can just looks like a function or function, and we'll return this dot first name plus space, and then this dot last name. We'll save it, and now you can see Eric Hanchet put it all together for us. And you can see if we add an input text type equals text. If we input type equal text, then I can add a V model here, which basically binds this value to this input. So I'm going to put in, let's say, first name. And I'm going to do the same thing for the last name. And here it is, so Eric Hanchet. So if I put Eric changes, let's delete this break. So I put Eric Bob Smith. So you can see it's updating in real time. This full name keeps getting updated, even though these two changed, which makes it nice. On top of that, we can also use getters and setters inside our computed property. So if we wanted to, we could do something like this. We would do full name like this, and then we'd have a git and a function. And we can actually, and by default, computer properties are just using the git, the getter. And this is an easy way to get and set properties. And you do function here. So for getter, that's not going to change. And so that's nothing different. So we can add a third input and we'll call this 
we'll call this full name, which is right there. And we can actually have it change. So if we wanted to have the full name when you set it to do something special, we can. Um, so if you right now you can see here, if I add something, nothing happens. If I delete it, nothing happens. So I'm setting it, but nothing is changing. So I can make it so that way you can edit both the first and last name. So I could take this el element and I can do a split on it on space, and that will split it into a. Let's do let full equals that. I'll move up a little bit here. Table here. So we can do console dot log full. And let's just take a look at what it looks like. So I'm going to inspect it and I'll bring this up so you can see it. And once I start writing in here, you can see that it's creating this array and each part of the array has a different value in it. So the first, it's split. It, this is just a simple JavaScript split. So the first part is Eric, second is Hanchet, and then the third is two, since I did a space here. So I can go in and take this this full variable and uh, since I split it out, take the array and then assign it to this dot first name or last name. I can do that, but for the sake of simplicity, I'll just let you guys do that. If you want to do that at home, just take this split and reassign it to first name and last name or to a different property and you can get an idea of how that works. So that is computed properties, but there's one more thing we can do here. Let's take a look at another example. So I'm going to go ahead and delete a few of these. I'm going to delete the full name. And then I'm going to make this model of the scale, or level I should say. And we'll get rid of this. And we'll get rid of this. Let's make sure we got the right place. And we'll save it. Okay, and you can see here this number and that it gets updated as we suspect. So, uh, expect. So if we go back up to the top and let's create a new another computed property which just shows the scale. So let's create one called scale. And we'll create scale here. And inside here, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the level itself. So we'll go this, we'll go if this dot level is less than 50, then we'll return beginner. Beginner. And else if this level is less than 100, we'll return intermediate. And then finally, else, we'll just return advanced. Actually, we could do it like that. So we have 500 here, so it says advanced. But if we have 45, shows beginner. Let's do this BR break. Save it. Okay, so you can see here if I do 100, advanced, 45 is beginner, 75 is intermediate. So you can kind of see how as this value changes that it's going to go ahead and run this scale computed property. And like I said before, this is all cached. So that's one of the differences between just creating a function here or method and having that be inside the double curly braces. So that's just a couple of quick examples on how to use computed properties. Now there's one other thing we can talk about before we end here is there's view and there's computed properties 
and I'll bring up the guide here. Okay, one more thing we can take a look at is watch. So watch versus computed property. So view does provide a more generic way to observe and react to data changes in view instance watch. But really, most of the times you want to consider using computed properties, but it's another way to watch a property. I won't get into it in this demo, maybe in the future, but you can take a look at that too. So I just want to say thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please leave a, uh, please hit the like button and subscribe. That'd be really helpful. Thanks and have a great day.